Yellow M here. Welcome to my cosy Create and Farmer's Delight modded Minecraft video. This is episode 3. We're going to build a watermill today and get started with some of the Create mod. And to get going with that, I've dug a giant hole underground and started collecting a whole load more diorite and andesite and cobblestone, which we'll be using in our builds. So through all of that digging, I have found a lot of zinc, which if you're not familiar with the create mod, is another metal that it adds. We can combine zinc with copper to make brass, but we also need zinc to get another thing, which is andesite alloy. Two pieces of andesite and a zinc ingot gives us andesite alloy. And with this, we can get into the create mod. So when we've got a few pieces of the sandesite alloy, we can begin making a few create blocks. I will make a bunch of shafts, and then if I take some planks, I can combine planks and shafts to make some cogs. So I'll make a few of those to get started. And I'll make some big cogs as well. And I think the first thing that I would like to build is a grind. No, a, a mill. Yes, a millstone. So for a millstone, I need some stone, andesite casing, and a small cog. Andesite casing is something I know I can make by stripping some logs and then right-clicking it with andesite alloy. And now we've got this rather beautiful stuff. You may notice I've installed a texture pack. Uh, I can't remember who made it, but I'll include a link in the description. Um, a texture pack which makes the chests look like it's made out of this andesite, andesite alloy stuff. This stuff is super handy. So uh, the create mod adds various different cogs and shafts, and with the andesite casing, we can cover those up and sort of hide the workings of our machines, which makes them look quite tidy, or can make them look quite tidy. So I wanted a piece of stone. I have tough, and I think the recipe said I could use tough to make a millstone. So with a millstone, I can... I wanted to make a handle as well so that I can hand crank this. Hand crank. Perfect. So if I've got a hand crank attached to a cog, attached to the mill, when I right click this, everything rotates. Oh, lovely. I can now throw some wheat into the top of this and grind it down into flour. So by right clicking this, we use up a lot of food, but we have now converted the wheat into wheat flour. And with a bit of water, we can turn that into a dough. There's water and flour. We've now got three dough, and we can put those three dough on the griddle, and we should have bread. And just like that, we've got three pieces of bread. And while that is fine, using this handle um, drains our hunger really fast. And it means we need to sit around. So that's not ideal. So we will automate this. So another thing that we can build is a water wheel. And if we place down a water wheel under or near running water, or, uh, like under or on running water, we can generate some power. And while that looks okay, we can also upgrade it to a large water wheel. I think that's what I will use. Uh, find a spot to put this down. Just put it on the side of the house for now. Um, 
we can have a, a, a much, much larger water wheel. So I'm going to do a little bit of landscaping and build a river emptying out on the lake. And we will put together a water mill. So this has taken quite a bit longer than I was expecting. I definitely bit off a bit more than I can chew. The rest of this mountain I will finish doing in a future video, possibly off camera between videos. It's surprising quite how much longer things take, even if just recording a time lapse. But I've built up a bit more of this hill here, and I've covered it in trees and a bit of grass, and I've left this this little area down the middle here, and that is going to be where I'd like to build the water mill. I had some blocks in mind, and they were, possibly not surprisingly, the same as what I built my house with. Let's try laying something out. I rather like the number 11 when it comes to the size of these. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, and I'll just bring this up like so. So this will be the, I think, the width of the main bit of the building. And I will bring the river along down this way, and I think we'll come around here. I'd like my river to be about four blocks wide, maybe five. We'll see how it feels. So this will become the riverbed right down there. And let's use some cobble to fill up the sides for now. I might replace that with a brick of some kind. But rivers are often quite rocky, so it might work. So we're going to have the river running down here. This is going to be where the water wheel sits, and actually I brought one with me. So... Oh, I don't know why it does that. I don't love that. We can sit that... Actually, we may be able to sit it up a block. Let's see how the water fits. That seems to work well at that angle. At that level, rather. Yeah. 
So I need to do a lot more to make the river flow nicely once the uh, rest of the path is dug in. But this is looking good. So let's see, it's the cobblestone ends and then it's up one. So it's about here. I think it's the other side of it. No, it'll be here, there. Okay. Um, did I bring some shafts? I did. So with the water wheel there, I can bring some shafts through and we bring that rotation generated by the water into the water mill. And we can begin to see how this will start taking shape. So now that we've got rotation power coming into the building, I'll lower this floor a tiny bit so we've got slightly more space to work with. We can put a big cogwheel on the side there. And with one of these, I can put uh, another big cogwheel sideways to it to change which direction things are rotating in. So I'll put one on the floor, like that. And then on top of there, I can put the millstone. And now the millstone is being run entirely by the water wheels outside. And if we take some more of this wheat that we've been growing, we can grind it down to flour. And we're not losing any hunger doing this. It's all coming from the power of the water wheel. And we've got 19 pieces of wheat flour from that. So I'll shove that in there and hop into a time lapse so that I don't need to think about talking while I'm building. This is my watermill. I'm quite pleased with it, I think. It definitely looks pretty from the outside. Still can't decide if I want one or two wheels on there. But I'll probably change that out a bit more. Uh, using a few more block variations to get texture in the nooks and crannies and a, a little bit of shadow under bits that would be overhangs. This block up here is a block provided by Create which I really, really like. It's uh, a copycat step, and I think it was added in a recent update of Create, which introduced trains as a thing you can build. And there's a couple of different copycat blocks in there. So you can make this, and this is technically a little framework that you can then right-click with another block to make this sort of quarter-step-shaped block thing. I imagine it was designed to be building train platforms. But I actually quite like the texture of it as it is, so I'm using it as a, a gutter. Because I think that looks quite nice. I had this little add-on bit of the house back here, but I cannot work out how to make it work from inside, so I'm going to just tear this down and have a flat wall back there. I think that looks a little bit better. And at the back we've got a little crane for lifting 
uh, wheat blocks, wheat bales, up into the loft. And then down here we've got what will be the entrance. Well, I guess it is the entrance. Um, which comes around to here. I'll extend a staircase up around there into the loft, as well as having a little door up there. And I vaguely have a recollection of going to see a windmill as a child and seeing how the whole process worked uh, for milling flour. And what they had there was the the millstone was part way up and things sort of made their way from up high in the windmill to down low. And I quite like the idea of trying to do similar. So to do that, I'd have the millstone sitting here, which means I need to bring in the rotational power up to it. The very first way that you can change the direction of rotational power in the Create mod is with these large gears. And if you put them next to each other like that, it will change the direction of the rotation. So if I put a handle on here and I rotate that, you can see the one closest to us is going anti-clockwise and the one below it is going at 90 degrees. The one opposite it is going clockwise. So it's sort of, it's changed the direction round uh, along this axis and then it's flipped the axis for the uppy downy bit. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it makes some sense. Create also provides us with a block for doing that in a slightly more compact manner, which is a, a gearbox. So with one piece of andesite casing and four of the little cogwheels, we can have exactly that same mechanism, but scaled down. And, and now we can have rotation coming in on one side and then out on three more sides. If we pop this back into the crafting bench again, we can make it a vertical gearbox. And I'm going to use that to send my rotation power upstairs. So I'm going to remove these. I'm going to plug that in there. So the rotation is coming from outside into this box. And now we've got some vertical rotation which we can send up through the ceiling and then with another little gear on top we've transferred this rotation upstairs and into that grindstone. So we've now got a millstone up here which can take the wheat that we produce, bring it in through the loft window and grind it down. But yeah, I'm running a little bit low on time at the moment so I think that's going to have to be it for today. But next week we will look at connecting these up a little bit better and maybe expanding the farming operation out into this area. We'll have some fields producing more crops. And while digging for the deep slate for, for the roof, I did find a few more seeds in a chest down there and a saddle. So we'll see if we can find ourselves a horse as well. And then we can do a little bit more exploring as well. But, for now, I've been M. This has been Cozy Modded Minecraft. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, do leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week. Bye.